You taught that whatever arises dependently is free of ceasing, free of arising. free of extinction, free of permanence, free of coming, free of going, free of being one, free of being many. You taught perfect peace, the easing of all elaborations, perfect Buddha, supreme among speakers, I pay homage to you. Just as a grammarian first has students read a model of the alphabet, the Buddha taught students the doctrine that they could bear. To some he taught doctrines to turn them away from ill deeds. To some for the sake of achieving merit. To some doctrines based on duality. To some doctrines based on non-duality. To some, what is profound and frightening to the fearful. Having an essence of emptiness and compassion. the means of achieving unsurpassed enlightenment. Without a foundation in the conventional truth, the significance of the ultimate cannot be taught. Without understanding the significance of the ultimate, liberation is not achieved. By a misperception of emptiness, a person of little intelligence is destroyed, like a snake incorrectly seized. Or like a spell incorrectly cast. For that reason, 
that the Dharma is deep and difficult to understand and to learn. The Buddha's mind despaired of being able to teach it. A doer arises dependent on a doing, and a doing exists dependent on a doer. Except for that, we do not see another cause for their establishment. Seeing what is not real, you are bound. Seeing the real, you are free. All philosophies are mental fabrications. There has never been a single doctrine by which one could enter the true essence of things. All the dogmatists have been terrified by the lion's roar of shunyata, emptiness. Wherever they may reside, shunyata lies in wait. The victorious ones have said that emptiness is the relinquishing of all views. For whomever emptiness is a view, that one will accomplish nothing. Just as it is known that an image of one's face is seen depending on a mirror, but does not really exist as a face. So the conception of I exists dependent on mind and body. But like the image of a face, the I does not at all exist as its own reality. I am not. I will not be. 
I have not, I will not have. This frightens all children and kills fear in the wise. If wanderers were not themselves the cause, then like the scent and colour of the lotus in the sky, there would be no perception of the universe. Whatever is dependently co-arisen, that is explained to be emptiness. That being a dependent designation is itself the middle way. These different links, twelve in number, which Buddha taught as dependent origination, can be summarized in three categories. Mental afflictions, karma and suffering. The first, eighth, and ninth are afflictions. The second and tenth are karma. The remaining seven are suffering. Thus the twelve links are grouped in three. From the three, the two originate and from the two, the seven come. From seven, the three come once again. Thus the wheel of existence turns and turns. All beings consist of causes and effects in which there is no sentient being at all. From phenomena which are exclusively empty there arise only empty phenomena. All things are devoid of any I or mine. Like a recitation, a candle, a mirror, a seal, a magnifying glass, a seed, sourness, or a sound. So also with the continuation of the aggregates, the wise should know they are not transferred.
then, as for extremely subtle entities, those who regard them with nihilism, lacking precise and thorough knowledge, will not see the actuality of conditioned arising. In this, there is not a thing to be removed, nor the slightest thing to be added. It is looking perfectly into reality itself. And when reality is seen, complete liberation. the pacification of all cognitive grasping and the pacification of conceptual proliferation are peace. With all its many risks, this life endures no more than wind-blown bubbles in a stream. How marvellous to breathe in and out again. To fall asleep and then awake, refreshed. 